Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Malvika. Hi, I'm Hila Freebie. And welcome back to IMG Marvel's YouTube page. Today we're going to talk about the PSA exam. The PSA exam is the prescribing safety exam and it is an exam that's given by all UK medical students in their final year of medical school, the um, IMGs that join FY1, um, and it's a requirement for you to get full registration of the GMC as well as some trusts make the FY2 standalones also do the prescribing safety exam. So this exam has eight sections, a total of 200 marks and 120 minutes to complete. It is now being done online. So the eight sections are divided into prescribing, prescription review, planning management, communication slash providing information, calculation, adverse drug reactions, drug monitoring, and data interpretation. So if you're a UK medical graduate, uh, your university will register you in your final year of medical school and you'll have to give the exam that way. If you're an F1, then your trust should register you. And if you're an F2 requiring the PSA, your trust will let you know and register you directly for the exam. So your deadline for passing the PSA is basically before you finish F1, mm -hmm. because in order to get the full ARCP requirements for the GMC full registration, you need to have passed the PSA as one of the outcomes. And you can sit the PSA multiple times, but you must pass it before you finish F1. Even as UK medical graduates, you can sit the PSA again as an F1 if you failed it as a medical student. So me and Dr. Afridi, we did the exam as F1s because we're IMGs. Um, Hiba, how long did you study for the exam? So my first rotation did not require me to be prescribing that much because it was peds and psychiatry. Um, so I had to refresh my prescribing knowledge and I started looking at my resources one month before my exam. And I was already prescribing on a daily basis in my first F1 job as a um, general surgical F1. So I started studying maybe about two weeks before the exam. Um, we used to pass the PSA book. Um, I actually read through all the information in there um, and did the questions. Please, please, please go through the official mock papers on the PSA website. When you are registered to the website, you can then um, access these three mock papers and they are exactly like your exam is going to be. A lot of the questions are repeated um, and a lot of the information is repeated um, and it'll also really help you practice on how to um, access the BNF and find the information in the BNF while you're doing the exam. If you're a medical student who is giving this exam, you might need more resources than just the PSA book and the mock exams uh, because your knowledge base won't be as um, large as a doctor who's giving the exam, who's prescribing these medications on a daily basis and is quite um, used to prescribing these things on a daily basis and the side effects and you know, you listen to things, you pick things up and work. So, um, but if you're a practicing doctor, um, we think the PSA and the mocks, the book and the mocks are just enough for the PSA exam. If you're from medical school abroad and if you're an F1 uh, as well, you might have given a prescribing exam in your country or in a prescribing exam in your university which again it might be quite similar you might need less um, practice than the others but don't underestimate the exam it's not easy um, they have very specific things that are very UK oriented um, that you might have to study and pick up on. I think the first and the most important tip is time management um, it is quite a lengthy exam and you have 120 minutes they go by so fast and um, <laughs> I did struggle with timing, um, so did you, didn't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a very fast exam giver, but basically my entire time had ended and I had two entire sections to go. We were given extra time because um, there was 20 minutes in the middle where there was um, some technical difficulties and people can access their BNF. And so I had those 20 extra minutes to really quickly go in and do 20 questions I'd left over. Um, so timing is a big, big, big issue in this exam. There are eight sections they come in order. You need to do the prescribing and the prescription review sections, which will be the first two sections because they carry 112 marks out of 200. Take your time on that. Make sure you do them correctly. They're the most important ones. That's so, more than 50% of your marks. So yeah, we spent most of our time doing those two mm -hmm. sections and focusing on getting all of that right. 
before moving ahead and then figuring out what other sections need more time and less time? While we were practicing, uh, we realized that planning management and communication takes a lot of time and there are only two mark per question. And while that's okay for some of you, some of you might be able to uh, tackle those questions quickly, at least for you and I, we found that we were spending way too much time for two marks per question. So and instead, also we were scoring really low on them, mm -hmm. uh, despite spending the time and doing all of that. So we were like, you know, those are marks that basically, even if we don't attempt those questions, we can discount. You might as well be attempting the sections that you're scoring well in. So attempt those first, get the marks, and then leave the other sections for later. So we went one, two, five, six, seven, eight, and then went back for three and four. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just how it worked for us, but you might be different. So when you do the mock exams that are on the official website, you'll really know where you're struggling and what you're doing, and you'll be able to make much of a better plan mm -hmm. to tackle the sections. But the first two we recommend, because it's 112 marks out of 200, you might just pass with those sections alone. So you really, really need to get a good score on those sections. So the exam was online this time. So it's really important that you do the practices online so you know exactly how the exam format is going to be. Or alternatively, if your paper is going to be a paper exam because you know COVID is done with, uh, then you want to actually practice the paper prescriptions because those are different and they have different marking allocations. Um, another thing was, we didn't know this when we were starting our exam, but you can have a piece of paper with you. It really comes in handy when you're doing the calculation mm -hmm. questions and like the, and you're like writing things down or like you have something um, basically to keep you on track. Mm -hmm. So the paper and pen is another thing. You can use a calculator, a simple calculator, not electronic. Um, and also there's a calculator on the PSA website page that you can access in the middle of your exam. So you can use that if it's easier for you or you could just have a normal manual calculator with you if that's quicker. Mm -hmm. um, another really important thing to remember is to practice with the online BNF. Practice with the either the NICE BNF or the MC BNF, I think it's called. Practice with whichever MC. one, yeah, whichever one you're most comfortable with. If it's online, then um, practice, you know, control F, know exactly where the things are, where the adverse drug reactions are, where the renal dosing is, where the hepatic dosing is, know all of those things. Yeah. Uh, practice with the BNF as you will be using it in the exam. Even if you're doing the online exam, by the way, you can use the book BNF with you if you feel more comfortable with that mm -hmm. and keep the book BNF with you. It has to be the nice one, but you can keep it. Um, but the most time consuming part of this exam is to actually go through the BNF. So practice going through the BNF and using the control F function. Yeah. So for example, if I want to search for the question states that this person had a you know tinnitus as a side effect of a medication and they give you a bunch of medications and say what medication could be causing the side effect, you go into BNF. So suppose you have a rough idea that this specific medication can cause tinnitus. You go to that specific medication, control F, right, tinnitus might be there. You don't have to even go through and scroll through the page. On, um, let's say you want to find an interaction between two drugs. Mm -hmm. You can't just control F actually. You'll have to go onto the drug, go onto the page of the drug on the BNF, and then go specifically to the interaction section and then control F and find uh, the drug interactions uh, in the BNF. There's also specific pages uh, where there's specific information that you'll have to know, like dosing of warfarin, I think. Mm -hmm. There's like an anticoagulants page for that. Um, there was uh, one page for pain medication, which tells you how to convert morphine to buprenorphine and all of those things. So mm -hmm. only when you're practicing and you try to find these things in the BNF, will you realize where they're hidden almost mm -hmm. and how to find them on the, on the day of the exam. You don't want to be sitting there on the day of the exam, looking through the BNF, wasting your time. Mm -hmm. So in the online exam, there's a clock on the top so you can keep track of how much time has elapsed, how much time is uh, left. But if you want, you can keep a watch with you and just let the examiners know uh, and ask them if they're okay with it. It, it would be a simple stopwatch. Yeah. yeah. Um, another good thing about the uh, online exam was we didn't have to activate the Cardex. So everything was signed and dated beforehand. Whereas in the paper exam, you have to activate the card act. Don't take the exam lightly because a lot of my colleagues um, that I met as F1s or a lot of the other F1s who have done this as medical students told me that they 
failed many times and it's okay to fail. It's, it's not an issue. Yeah. The marks don't matter. Um, and the pass mark every year is different. Mm -hmm. So one year pass might be 60%, another it might be 70, 80, just depends on the exam and how difficult the exam is. But it's okay to fail the exam once or twice, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, but don't don't take it too lightly either. Study for the exam because it's not very easy. It is it's quite challenging, I think or mediocrely challenging at least, um, yeah. depending on what paper you get. But the exam really is um, good for your practice as an F1 or a junior doctor because it does genuinely make you much better at prescribing, much more knowledgeable mm -hmm. about the the um, prescriptions you're doing. You start thinking about fluids very differently. You really know what you're doing at the work, at the job. It's completely fine. You will be practicing prescribing throughout your F1. You will get better. You will know doses more than ever before once you start repeating the exam. It is absolutely fine. It does not matter how many times you fail. All you have to do is pass before you end your F1 year. And because it is a very time challenging exam. And it's just that's how exams are. And you just have to, you know, keep going. And attempt it once more and you'll be so much better and you'll remember so many things about prescribing that and one-time att attempters won't remember. Please like, share and subscribe. It really helps us out and hopefully I'll see you guys in our next video.